everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Man, it is absolutely gorgeous here. It's Saturday. I've uh, been to the dump twice, ran two trailers, got a third on location I'm about to go pick up. And we've got a great video coming for you, and there's going to be, I don't know how many yet, but we'll get to it. You got any idea what you want to know? Is that what it is? Do you want to be a dump trailer hustler? Do you want to be successful? You got to watch this. Yo, oh, man, you ain't going to find no tips in the microwave. You're going to find them right here on the Hustle Nation. Stay tuned. Ain't no tips in the hallway, but I got some for you coming up. Hello. Maybe Tyson got some tips for you. Tyson, you got any tips for how to be a successful dump trailer hustler? Oh, I just need some food right here, Dad. But uh, I want to hear about Jesse Mims. Oh, y'all heard what Tyson said. It's coming. I'm telling you, blow you away. Amazing. Okay. I got something for you. It's coming. And I'm sure some of y'all had said something to Jesse about what I talked about already. That's just how it is out here in social media land. I ain't scared. This is going to be a video. It's going to have three tips on how to be successful, to be more successful with your dump trailer hustle. And you're going to learn something. There's two things that you can learn from anybody what to do or what not to do stay tuned it's going to be eye-opening just like tyson right here just like tyson yeah hey, the hey everybody i hope you're having a very wonderful day it's running robert here with the hustle nation and i've got three tips for you on how to be more successful with your dump trailer business, okay? And got some news. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? So, you know, the first thing, it's amazing that 7% of the lottery winners end up filing bankruptcy within the first five years. Do you have any idea why that is? They found out, money, but they didn't watch the Hustle Nation. That's for sure. Here's the thing, okay? There is a word, and I'm probably going to spell it incorrectly. Discipline. In my opinion, the very worst thing that can happen when you go into business for yourself is real well immediately. I ain't hating. I don't wish anything bad on anybody. Okay? And I mean nobody. Alright? But the thing is, is that if you don't learn how to value five dollars, okay, there's no way for you to take care of a hundred. Alright? I guarantee that. Okay? The books full of sports stars, musicians, race car drivers, people that basically hit it big overnight, okay? And I'm not telling you or saying that those people don't deserve what they're getting paid. The market dictates that, all right? The thing about it, though, is, is that when you're handed a huge lump of money, okay, overnight, basically, the ability to actually know what it's worth is lost. And the problem is, is that sometimes people go into business and all of a sudden they just hit it like gangbusters. And I'm not saying that everybody's going to be reckless with their money and everything like that. But if people don't have discipline, they'll end up going broke okay. because eventually something's going to happen. I went and spent uh, $100 on a tire for one of the trailers just the other day. If I spend every dime that comes into my hands, I don't have any money left over to be able to make those repairs or even do the maintenance on my trailer. Oh yeah, they take maintenance. You got brakes, you got bearings, you got tires, you got hydraulic fluid. If you do any upgrades, like I get jacks put on mine, I get remote control on mine. All of those things cost money, okay? The big thing is, is that when it happens, 
okay? And I pray that you do hit a windfall. I mean, I've had a day where I made $400, okay? That was net. That's what it went in. Robbo's pocket, okay, because I found a number of people that had my money, all right, and I was able to capitalize on it. I got a great employee, Carla, that helps me out. Allison's doing a lot of the social media, so a lot of this stuff, a lot of people help me make those things happen, okay. I got a very understanding boss that I do estimates for, and he doesn't stand over my head, you know, because basically it's kind of, it's a waste, but it's a freelance in the sense that, you know, I can do as much as I want or as little as I want and everything like that. Um, and I got other sources of income that happen as well. My main focus is having to do with the dump trailer. But this is crucial for each, okay? I don't care if you're a rap star, lemonade stand, got a Burger King, whatever it is, okay? When you make money, all right, you got money that stays in your little economy. You go out of your house, you make some money. When you come back, some of your family gets it, okay? I'm single, my dogs get it. I go and buy food, they end up getting some of that money, okay? It's like the mini economy here at this house. The thing about it is, is that if you don't take that money out of play, what I mean is take it out of your pocket and put it into something, it's gonna be gone, okay? And you all hear me stress this Anytime. times, okay? Because man, there's gonna be some days you'll be like, bam, I'm ready to get this thing, I'm ready to get this money and everything like that. But not every day is gonna be like that. All right, so when the motivation goes, all right, discipline. Because discipline is, is when you wake up That's and you're right. really nice sheets and it's popsicle cold because the AC is blowing and you really don't want to get out of bed, but you do it anyway because you got the discipline. You got to do it day in and day out. That's how businesses get built, okay? Rome didn't get built in a day. You got some dues, okay? And really, the, the God's honest truth. Becoming successful, accumulating wealth, it's really not that much fun. It, 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 it's really not, okay? Because you end up having to tell yourself, no, all right? No, I'm not going to go buy that new King Ranch truck. No, I'm buying another Harley. No, I'm not going to go and get that new purse or whatever your flavor is, you know, or a new set of boots or, you know, no, I'm not going to add on to the house or something of that nature until we've got money put back. We got money in reserves. We got, as Gerald Peters says, we got our buckets right. Okay. The other day on one of the forums, Josh Roman, somebody called or somebody wrote in and said, "Hey, I got. Uh, I just quit my job. I got a dump trailer. And I'm starting to go in business." Josh said, "Congratulations. Now the work begins. There has been no truer statement ever said in man's entire history. Okay. Rarely." Does it ever happen that you go into business and it just takes off and it keeps on going, okay? You're going to have slow weeks. And my suggestion is learn how to live on less and put money away. If you're making $1,500 a, a week, you know how to put 1000 away and, and pay all your bills and living expenses on 500 or something like that. But you get the idea, okay? The thing about it is, is that you need to have money in reserves, okay? Because bad times are going to come, all right? God forbid, I don't want anything bad to anybody. Your trailer could get hit. And if you're out of business and you can't find a dump trailer to buy, what are you going to do? So that's the first thing. Learn the discipline, okay? To become successful, you're going to have to learn how to take care of $5 and then $10 and then $100. Just because the amount goes up doesn't mean that you become responsible and disciplined. There are plenty of people that have pissed away millions of dollars and had really no on how much money they're really blowing. You know, when people spend half a million dollars on a watch, you know, because you give me a half a million dollars, I'm going to go buy some uh, apartment complexes or something that's going to make me enough money that I can go buy a watch at the apartment complex. Hello! That's what I'm talking about, okay? Become disciplined, put money away, all right? And once you got some built up, then put it into something that's gonna start paying you money. Okay. Got a large sum of money sitting in the bank right now, you are going broke. Let me say that again. If you have a large sum of money sitting in a bank doing nothing, you will end up going broke because the amount of interest that they pay versus the cost of living increase, you're at a negative cash flow. All right, I can tell you this right now, just off the top of my head, to be able to basically break even, you need to be getting paid 5%. To be able to make anything, you need to be at least making a return of 6% on your money. 
And that ain't gonna be a whole bunch, I'm here to tell you. So you figure if you got a million dollars sitting in the bank and you think you're gonna retire off the interest, you get 40,000 a year. Now, once you just go ahead and slice Uncle Sam's cut off that eight grand, now you're at 32,000. You figure it out, can you really live that good on 2,500 a month? Just say it, ask yourself, okay? Next thing, all right? Marketing, extremely crucial. What do you know about it? What do you do about it? Redneck Robert, I don't see what Google AdWords or SEOs or any of that kind of stuff, and I'm not saying that you don't need to, okay? You might have to. Me personally, I've been in my town for a long, long time. I got a lot of contacts, and as soon as I put the word out, I'm gonna do a dump trailers, it took off, okay? Now, I've had some slow weeks, all right? And I got four trailers. When you got four trailers to sit in one day, that's the possibility of at least 800 to dollars a day that you're not making. And I have to ask myself, why am I not making that? So I'm constantly on the hunt, hunt for new customers. Here's the thing. Marketing. Make sure every you come in contact with knows exactly what you do, okay? If you follow me on social media, you'll know a couple things. I got pit bulls, I ride Harleys, I love Jesus, I like playing cards, and I love houses. I love real estate. And I have a dump trailer business, okay? And so everybody I come in contact with, I'm always telling them, saying, hey, look, if you ever need a dumpster or anything like that, give me a call. And if you ever know anybody that's selling a house, doesn't matter what condition it is or anything like that, I'm a cash buyer, and we close quickly. I'll buy anything, any condition. Oh, really? Yep, okay. And here's the thing about it is, is that the deals that I've gotten have been slow, okay, for buying houses, but the amount of people that come to me asking questions and they always flip houses. I ain't flipped a house in my life, okay? But it's their perception because they see these ugly houses that I buy, they see them when they're beautiful, and I rent them out, okay? That's my residual income that comes in every month. That makes my retirement for me, okay? So the thing is, is that people's perception, okay, of how you look to them they formulate an opinion and pay attention to what I just said because it's going to be very important, all right? So the thing is, is that everybody you come in contact with you need to have a pocket full of business cards and you need to let people know, hey, my name's Robert. I got a dump trailer business. If you ever have a garage cleanup or need me to come by, pick up a couch or something of that nature, please let me know. I'm your guy, all right? And here's the thing is, folks, make sure your voicemail is not full. Okay, it blows me away when people are running a business and you call them and it says the voicemail is full. I'm like, what? What if Ed McMahon calls and says, well, Rob, you know, well, hey, hey, Jim, we can't, we can't go to Robert's house and give him the check. His voicemail is full. I can't leave him a message. Next. Oh, Steve. All right. Steve, Steve, what's up, man? Hey, this is Ed McMahon, I'm leaving you a message. Give me a call back. Boom. Just got money. Robert didn't because his voicemail was full. It's a simple thing to do for crying out loud. Don't be stupid. Make sure because when you find out who's got your money, you need to be open to be able to receive it. Go home. Okay, let it come to you. All right? Let it come to you. And yeah, I'm, I am fired up about something. All right? So, you got to be constantly marketing. All right? Always make sure that everybody you come up with knows exactly what you do, all right? Because you never know when that $1,000 customer, that $5,000 or that $10,000 customer comes. You never know when that person that is going to cut a house loose for twenty grand that's worth 100000 And yes, I bought some houses real cheap that were worth a lot of money. Why? Because I asked. And I made it that I deal in real estate. So, last but not least, you got to know your numbers. All right, I hear people, I see it all the time. They take a picture of a big trash pile. What would you charge? It doesn't matter what I'm gonna charge. It matters what you need to make. Well, man, that's just kind of cruel and everything. No, it's not. I'm trying to teach you how to think, okay? If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if I teach you how to fish, you'll eat for the rest of your life, 
Okay? And you're not going to have Robert. You're not going to have Josh Roman. You won't have Jesse Mims, you know, to be able to say, hey, what's going on with this load and everything like that. And so, hey, you know, you need to learn how to think on your own. Look at that pile. You're going to get a feel for this. Okay, and guess what? Newsflash. You're going to lose money. If you go into business for yourself, I got a hard time believing that everything that you do is going to be a positive cash flow. At some point, you will lose money. It's part of success. You've got to do it, okay? I've never met anybody that has not lost money, all right? And I know people that have lost millions of dollars because of bad bids, you know, uh, lawsuits, all kinds of different things, all right? And so you have really got to know your numbers, all right? The thing about it is, figure out what your time's worth, figure out what the cost of your on your vehicle is worth. You know, it's like with my, every load that I take, I take $20 and I put it to the side, that's the maintenance fund. That's for the trailer and that's for the truck, okay? So if I do 10 loads in one week, that's $200 that goes in for oil change, greasing the bearings on the trailer, transmission fluid. It's like my truck has got, I bought it with 4,000 miles. It's right at 90. My transmission fluid's been changed three times, okay? My mechanic rolls his eyes when I come in there and I'm like, dude, I am exceeding the recommended daily allowance. The best thing that I can do is over maintain this. And he's like, well, you're right. You know, most people don't change the transmission fluid for 200,000 miles. You know, mine's been changed three times in 40,000. Okay. So that's part of those expenses that go to this and everything. All right. So learn your numbers. Okay. Don't be afraid to get out there and fail. Go ahead and do it. You it's know? different. If you look at that pile and say, you know what? I think that's going to be two trips. I think it's going to be roughly $200 in dump fees. I need to make $50 an hour. That's eight hours. That's $400. Let's put this thing together and package it. Add a little bit on top in case of unknowns. Ah, that's an $850 job, right? Let me go tell the customer. That's what needs to happen because my area is different, okay? Had a gentleman in Texas that called me. I think his first name is Angel. He works at an oil refinery. He makes $38 an hour, okay? He makes a good hourly wage. The thing about it is, is it has to be worth his time to do this gig. So he ha he's thinking through different eyes, okay? I don't have a W-2 job. I am it, all right? So everything that I hustle and make myself, that goes into my pocket. And I say all of this because, all right, and this has to do with you know who, Earlier this year, I watched Jesse's videos and I love them. I like the guy personally. I look forward to meeting him one day. What happened is he and his family, his whole house got infected with the coronavirus. He was down bad. And um, according to him, um, I don't know if he is really close to death, but he sure felt like it. Okay. And there was one thing key that I picked up because I didn't see any videos from him. I sent him a uh, the email said, hey man, what and everything? And he said, dude, I appreciate that, but I've caught Corona. And I think that I sent him an email, but we, we corresponded back and forth and it had to do with this. The thing about it is, is that Jesse had money in savings, okay? His wife, I believe, has a job as well, and so they were able to get through with it, okay? If Jesse had no discipline to put money back, you might not see a Jesse Mims roll-off channel any longer. The problem with doing well is all of a sudden distractions come up. Diamonds, new watch, new boots, uh, you know, let's go ahead and remodel the house. Oh, I want a bigger truck. I want leather seats. I want a sunroof. You want all those kind of things. If you watch him, he talks about maintenance on his vehicles because because that truck makes some money. And so he's going to put money into it. Okay. The other thing is, is. It's either a tradesman or a big horn, all right? It ain't the Laramie full decked out with, you know, every Mac Daddy whistle and everything like that. It does the job it, well, and there it's not excessive, okay? And the thing about it is, is that you have got to have discipline. And if you think I'm kidding, back in 08, you know, I play a lot of cards. I used to know every backroom game from New Orleans to Tallahassee along the coast before it was legalized on the coast. And... 08, we had a bunch of um, developers and builders that were playing with us, okay? 
And the way these guys threw money around, you would believe that, you know, they just came home and would sit down on a recliner full of cash and everything like that. Wasn't like that. Come to find out, most of them couldn't write a check out of their own pocket for 10 grand. But man, they had a line of credit with the bank that would go for miles, okay? They could, you know, write off, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars all in one shot because of this line of credit that they have, right? And so the thing about it is, is what I learned was, is that all of these guys looked like they had money, but they really didn't. Well, in the crash of 08, we were all buying their Harleys, big screen TVs, pontoon boats for 10 cents on the dollar because they did not put any money away. And financing changed. Homeland because Security Act, and then all of a sudden these banks were having to redo the way that they loaned out money because they got caught with their pants down. They were giving loans to people. You know, back in uh, 05, I called a Lamborghini dealership down in Miami. I was working for the cable company. They said, sir, you can drop the lot with anything you want. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And they said, no, sir. I asked them about a particular model. They said that would be $189,000 as a sticker price on that car. And I said, I can come down tomorrow and you're going to put me in that and let me drive off. Your credit's so good that we, yes, we can. We don't have to have any pay stubs or anything like that. And I was like, that's wrong. Big time wrong. Okay. There's no way I could afford a payment on a car that's 189000 Okay. No way I want to afford it. All right. But here's the thing that I'm telling you is you got to have that discipline. And just as Jesse said, because of that tragedy that struck his family, he was able to make it through it. All right. And it wasn't like he was sitting there talking about or giving a whole lot of airtime that I was worried about money. What he did say was, is I had money saved up. Y'all hear me preach about it all the time as far as get your foundation right. You go watch Gerald Peters. Look up Gerald Peters and go watch him. Full Auto 11 on Instagram. He talks about get your buckets right to start with, okay? What's the most important part of any building or a house or a structure? The foundation, okay? No matter how good it looks, no matter how tall it is, if the foundation is not stable, it's going to crack. The number one reason that businesses fail is because they're undercapitalized. And I'm not saying for you not to take a chance or give it a shot. I did it, and it's paid off, and I love it. Okay, I work 90 hours a week for myself. It's better than 40 hours a week for anybody else. Here's the thing. Get your foundation right, all right? You make some money, put it away. Whatever you got to do. Eat Top Ramen for the next 30 days. I don't care, but cut your bills, all right? Get that foundation. Stack you some cash, all right? I remember the first time when I hit 10 grand in my business account. Holy smokes! You want to talk about it? Would have been easier to bite through a railroad spike with my teeth than to make that 10 grand. It was hard, real hard. And it was like we would make money, then I'd have to spend money. We'd make money, then I'd have to spend money. Then I'd have money, then I'd make a little money, then I'd have to spend more money. And then I'd, you know, and it was this constant ebb and flow, ebb and flow, okay? Eventually it did hit, and I'll never forget, I went to a buddy of mine that's extremely wealthy, and I said, man, I just, uh, I hit 10 grand. He said, Rob, that'll be the hardest $10,000 you're ever gonna make. He said, I guarantee you. He said, once you hit 100,000, it's gonna get a whole lot easier. Haven't quite made that yet, okay, but part of that reason is because as soon as I get money above my reserves, I put it into play. Okay, I'm not stashing. I don't want it sitting there making, you know, 0.2% or whatever they're paying these days and everything like that. So, that's my thing. The caveat to this is, because of the way I phrased things, having to do with Jesse Mims, I never said anything destructive. I never said anything derogatory about him. But because of the way I phrase things, I have people saying, saying, hey man, what's up with y'all there? I hope there's not a beef or anything like that. There's not. He and I are on great terms. I sent him an email saying, I'm going to do this. I just want you to get, get, I want to give you a heads up. And is it okay? He said, not a problem. Thank you very much, Jesse. I do appreciate it. I hope that you all get the point I'm trying to make is two things. You got to have the discipline to be successful. Okay. The other thing is, is be careful about your perception that you form because you never know 
unless you hear directly, okay? Because of the way I think, I'm willing to bet more people thought this was going to be something on the negative side and not like this, okay? It's easy for us to get off and running on having to do with social media because it's such a small perception that we see, okay? You know, a lot of people say, man, you're just great, you're awesome and everything like that. You come hang out with me for about three weeks, you be, man, that's arrogant, dude. Man, that guy's nonstop, he's this, he's that. That's that guy Jason did the ride along with me and everything. He would probably say, man, I didn't realize, you know, and everything, because that guy, boom, let's do it. You know, he's all about business and everything. So, again, just be careful, you know. Reputations are ruined, people's perceptions, judgments, are all totally history because of our perception and we don't have all the information. So, if you would, just take away something and start getting your mind. Make sure that you got that discipline, okay? Discipline, figure out from every load that you take how much you need to set aside and do that right off the top, okay? The company gets paid right off the top. You know, $20, boom, it goes straight to the side, all right? I hope you have a wonderful day. Keep hustling, be productive, be profitable, and figure out who's got your money. Have a wonderful day.